Okay, cool. So let me open up your link and also welcome you to this meeting. Um, and you can just take it away when you're ready. Cool. Um, yeah, so we have been looking at meshing the CDI um, sort of workloads. Um, but there is an issue at the moment with a lot of the service meshes, such as Istio and LinkD, um, where they hit this same issue with meshing Kubernetes jobs, um, but more specifically transient pods. Um, so it's not uh, handling the, um, the sort of the SIG term, the uh, stopping of the proxies, um, as they're called, um, on these uh, types of workloads. So the upstream um, sort of service meshes, both Istio and LinkD suffer the same issues. Um, and their suggestion is to basically send a post hook um, sort of command, which triggers the shutdown of those proxies, um, which is that example there. So there was sort of two suggestions we, we sort of proposed. One was actually uh, making it configurable via the TDI config. Um, but it doesn't seem quite necessary to make the API changes. Um, so the sort of second option was to use the um, annotations on the pods. So this LinkD example one um, would be included on all meshed pods, um, including the KH jobs. Um, and that would be, there would be another annotation as well, which Istio use, um, which Kubevert have actually already got in their repo as well um, for meshing VMs with Istio. Um, so it's the same same principle. Oh, I didn't realize Kubevert has this uh, change already. Yeah, they, ha they have the, um, the Istio one. I don't think they have the LinkD one at the moment. Um, but I think with the past networking stuff they've got coming in, it kind of makes those um, annotations uh, redundant. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, the minimal change, not making this a whole API is completely makes sense. It's, uh, um, I, I really also, I, I really like the drama around Linkerd. Well, I didn't like it. I just... Uh, you explained it to me the other day where they just made a new release, right? And that release, which supports sidecar pods properly, the sidecar feature, but that release is backed by a different license and it can't really be used as freely as other Linkerd releases. Yeah, yeah, which is a bit of a pain at the moment for anyone using the service much. Yep. Um, yeah, just uh, let people chime in. How's uh, how are people feeling about this? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine with it. We can just add the annotations. Cool. Works for me. Awesome. Yeah, I I don't think it'll be like a permanent thing. Um, eventually, it probably won't be needed. Um, once we get to like Kubernetes one two nine, and it becomes uh the default to use the native sidecar support, where this problem just doesn't exist. Yep. Just quickly log in so I can post a summary. Um, should I uh, dive into the Linkerd license thing, or yeah, just, it's fine either way. So I yeah, I don't uh, think it matters. But so yeah. is there there and there's an Istio one to well. Yeah, there's there's an Istio annotation as well. Um, probably need to go have a look at exactly what they um suggest and propose, and just verify that's the same issue. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if we're going to do one, we may as well add both. It's 
So Kubert has the reference implementation for the STR one, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. And I could assign this to you if you're not already assigned. Is that fine? Yep, that works for me. Awesome. It's probably not what I wanted. Here we go. Nope, that should work. Okay, cool. Um, let me quickly check the chat. Okay. Yeah, Zoom isn't giving me like a notification, so I just randomly noticed this. Okay, cool. So this in turn means that uh, the third launch report would use that uh, post request to send a shutdown. Um, not quite. So that would just instruct the VM to be meshed. Um, but I've actually also found the same issue with the virtual machine sometimes where the pod just never gets terminated. Um, so it's just going to raise an upstream uh, issue again, uh, but with oh, Kubert okay. specifically on that. Okay. I thought you meant that this is recognized by um, Kubert and the follow-up for this would be that shutdown signal. But yeah, we should probably get this yeah. for... Yeah, they do make some assumptions um, for the networking. So when like masquerade interface is used based on that annotation, they do some um, changes to like the routing rules and everything. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll probably have to have a look at that as well. Yeah, I I think you mentioned this to me. Your real intention is uh, mostly about meshing the VMs, right? Yeah, ultimately that's probably more important. Yeah. Um. Cool. Cool. And oh, and uh, some of us, some people that are not in this meeting, were really interested about the use case as well. Um. I think you mentioned it to me briefly, but uh, something about meshes graduating to have more f features in them, not just microservice communication, something like that. Yeah. Right? So yeah. So I mean, the import pods don't have much. Uh, intra cluster communication with pods, but there's stuff like health probes and those other sort of things as well, which um, can be meshed. So there is other advantages to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Awesome. So I think we're good on this topic. So I'm going to go back to the doc. Uh, and Shelly, if you want to go with the uh... With this topic now. Um, okay, so basically, um, we have tests um, to run the backup scenarios with a Windows VM. And uh, before we, any VM, before we uh, backup any VM, we will run FS freeze to the system. And with this Windows VM, we get um, that the freeze um, fails. Um, that's the background. Now I, I played with this a lot, tried to find the reason how we can prevent it, uh, what might be causing this. Uh, I reached to the conclusion that we in the test obviously we do the the backup right when the Windows VM is running, um, and the fact that we see it running doesn't mean it's really um, uh, ready to do this kind of invasive commands like freeze. Um, we did see that if we like if I let if I start the VM, leave it alone at the side for a couple of I don't know how much time, um, the freeze will work. So there is amount of time that if you wait long enough, it will probably work. Um, but we don't know this amount of time. 
Now, I did uh, think that um, the reason for this is that the VSS, which is a Windows um, thingy that is responsible to um, to do the, um, the somewhat of uh, handling of the volumes to handle their freeze, that it's not ready to accept the freeze command that we say in the guest agent that it's ready to do the freeze, but in fact, the VSS is not ready. Um, but even if I um, logged into the machine and saw that the VSS is running, is ready, uh, played with the, with the whole um, statuses and startup types and everything that I talked with the um, rel team, it didn't really help. Like even if it was running or I started it and only then did the freeze, then it still um, failed. Um, so I'm not sure what's the solution here because um, we thought originally if that's the issue, we should write some um, knowledge article about um, uh, doing all this VSS stuff, making sure it's running, um, that should be good enough, but it's not. Um, there were suggestions about adding some hook that will do some sleep and only then um, enable backups or stuff like that. Not sure if it was meant to be only in testing or in general, but yeah. Um, so there's all these hacks, but no, no, not a real solution. Um, I did mention here that the testing is being done with a certain Windows image that I don't think it's a production image. Um, so I'm not sure if it really represents a Windows um, VM that will be used by customers or not. Because when I talked with the RHEL team and they tried to reproduce it in a regular VM, regardless of KubeVert, uh, they didn't they weren't able to reproduce it um so any thoughts or questions nice find about that uh issue i i don't have any like specific insights so windows is a pain yeah yeah i mean <sighs> Well, yeah, this is obviously annoying, but I think um, we just have to communicate that it may fail sometimes when, you know, just be vague in communicating. Sometimes if VSS is not ready, we don't have to like, I don't know, you know, we're not, we didn't write the VSS or whatever this integration is, so we don't you know, have to say exactly, you know, to completely understand it. But the thing is, I, I guess what I'm saying is we, I don't think we should work too hard in trying to figure out when this thing is going to be ready, because at the end of the day, it's not going to help the um, users anymore. You know, if, if they get like, uh, so what will happen now, like they'll get a partially failed backup or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, does does it say that it failed because of a hook or something? Um, yeah. Of, yeah, then it, I don't know. I mean, we can let them know that, yeah, because, you know, we can't, I, I, I think we shouldn't hide it like, oh, this thing isn't ready, so we'll say we succeeded. I don't think that's a good solution. No, that's for sure. And I don't think we can really wait um, until it's ready. Um, but yeah, I, I understand how writing a test case is is difficult for this, though. Yeah. So I guess what I'm saying is, from the user perspective, I I, I don't know. We can say like, yeah, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, good luck. Uh, <laughs> 
I, I don't know what else we can do from that. It, it doesn't, it's not going to make their backups any, and it's not going to make their backups any better if we ignore this issue. Um, yeah. Um, I, I do think that it's, 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 it will not be common since, again, I see it only when you do this right after you started the VM or restarted the VM. Like usually I guess the backup will be after a while of running it. And also if I think if you run it again or at like one or twice again, it will succeed eventually. Yeah, I think it is really just a edge case and testing because yeah, usually your VMs are running for a long time and there is some I wrote it here also. I opened a bug about some issue with the FS freeze, regardless that even the if the freeze failed, then it reports that it's frozen. So it's a bit problematic for us that we check if the system is frozen or not and then uh, this is more relevant actually to to VM snapshot because in VM snapshot we just retry and uh, and we will say and we will continue with the the snapshot because uh, it shows frozen the next time we do the FS freeze although so that's just the VM status reporting that it's frozen yeah it's oh. the the guest agent reporting it. They have a yeah, problem. I mean this this is an, a bug that we can at least investigate and fix. Um, I don't know that we'll have much luck figuring out when Windows is ready to freeze. Yeah. Um, so they wanted to do some kind of of knowledge article, but I'm not sure what we can write there. Just if it happens to you, try again. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, just, you know, sometimes <laughs> if, it be a, if, you know, uh, Valero ADP backup happens shortly after a VM has started, um, may get a partially failed, you know, you can, if you look in the logs, it may be related to the, you know, hook failing. And sometimes that hook fails when the VM hasn't been up running very long. Mm -hmm. Try it. Yeah. yeah, we've had issues before where we, like, for example, with uh, the FSX Amazon storage solution, there's like this uh, rough edge with uh, deleting volume snapshots. And we don't exactly know why. It's just that we found some kind of like vague workaround. And I wrote the article and uh, the article doesn't list a resol like a clear resolution. It's just more or less to uh, tell customers what's happening and how to work around this, you know. So I don't I don't think uh, if you're writing the article, if, if it at least identifies the issue, that's already uh, a good thing. Yeah, as long as they can look at the backup and say like, oh, it failed because of this hook. And then they can look up the knowledge base and like the, it'll say, yeah, sometimes this hook fails. Um, try again. Yeah. yeah. What's GSS? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I did. Yeah, I just looked it up. Something general system, something. <laughs> I thought we used the knowledge base uh, website. I forget how it looks like. Yeah, this this thing here. And this is visible. You can decide it's visible for everyone. Anyway. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to add them to, to get another uh, look at this or opinion on this on how to resolve this ticket. So 
Yeah, and maybe the image difference between what we're testing and what the real team is testing, that's uh, an interesting point. I know there's some internal people at Red Hat that manage the Windows images. So yeah. they kind of hold all the information about the versioning and stuff like that. So maybe something can be improved there. Maybe like a newer guest agent. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's even the guest agent in the image and not like, yeah. the, like you know, you have all these kind of versions for the windows and like I tried to use one from the templates or the instance type, I don't know, from the OpenShift um, catalog. And I, I couldn't, um, you know, start the VM because it needed some credentials. And the one that I use for the test is just, I don't know, a hacky one. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Like a free one. So. Yeah. So there's someone managing it. Um, someone in QE specifically, that's all I know, but like it's manually managed by somebody and, you know, they have the licensing and all that stuff and they bake it into the image. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Okay, I think there's nothing uh, further on this issue. So, yeah. so I could just go back here and um, I just copied the CDI issues section from the previous meeting. So this is likely not true anymore. You have newer ones, but I'll just open it up and we can go from there. And uh, we were looking at Three one two two. That would be this one. So I guess this is new ones, these two. So create documentation explaining how PVC labels are derived from Envar. Okay, so this is the author of, of the PR that introduces the feature. So I assume he's also planning to document it uh, himself. Yeah, that would make sense to me. So I'll just and I think this this one is enough for this one. This is enough. And for a more interesting one, let's see. Uh, the data volume pointing to an existing virtual machine was deleted. So basically they're saying that they have data volumes deleted for no reason at all, unexpected. Some pretty old CDI version and Kubernetes version. Yep. Yeah, and I see Alexander is active here. Kubernetes bug that just deletes uh, resource that's 
hardcore. But I guess it's a pretty old old version, so it's possible. So it got deleted after a live migration. Is that what happened? Um, I think they're just like pondering the Virtual idea. Virtual machine migration causes the data volume to be deleted. The virtual machine was deleted. Well, if the virtual machine is deleted. I think this is just, deleted. yeah, I don't yeah. think so. Cause in this comment, he says no deletion timestamp on the VM is not set. I mean, I think that list above is just like, you know, uh, possible reasons. And he's kind of trying to go through them and rule them out or something. If they can set audit login on cluster, they can um, set up a policy to watch the data volume and then they can figure out what service account has deleted the data volume. Yeah, that's right. It gives you a true source of what's deleted the data volume. Uh, makes it easier to figure out. Yeah, that would work. And I remember just like a good entry point. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, as far as I know, we have no code that explicitly deletes data volumes. So, um, and the garbage collection is not in this version. I don't remember where we removed it. Oh, this is 41. This is like ancient. We weren't even thinking about uh, this feature. Mm. Yeah, thanks for that idea. And yeah, generally, I'd just love for them to switch to a newer maintained version of CDI. Um, yeah, but that may, may not be possible for them. So anyway, I think we're good on this one. And maybe I can try going back to the doc. OK, so. Actually, I can go back to the issue page and sort by activity, see if anything needs our attention. So this has been getting some traction. Interesting, it says that this had uh, activity three days ago, but this is pretty old. Okay, I'll just close this one. Um. Okay, yeah, we thought this is about uh, using the PVC section when in fact the real goal here was to use a storage profile and that, that means using the storage API. Okay, so. This 
move to rotten. So if there's a real issue, we should probably take it out. So this is about uh, memory snapshots. And um, he's saying that there's no traction on the issue here, but mm. OK. So I guess this is being tracked here. Um, is there anything? We could say about memory snapshots at this time, if there's like a good reason for us not to not to go into this. Okay, I think I'll just then go back and close this one. Okay, and I'm pretty sure this is already last week's territory with all of these. So I think we can uh, think that we're done with the issues and maybe anyone has any interesting last minute topic could go freestyle as well. Right, so I guess we'll end here. And thanks for joining and see everyone in two weeks. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.